Ellie Kemper. Ellie, how are you doing? Bobby, I'm really good. I'm better now. Thank you for having me. You know, I felt bad because well, um, Ellie and I have a mutual friend. It's my family. It's her close friend. And yep. I went on Ellie's podcast, which we'll talk about in five seconds. But then I <laughs> called my sister-in-law and I said, will you please apologize to Ellie? Because I think they made her put my episode on very first because they launched this podcast. And I did not do that. I'm not a diva in any way. And Bobby. I- What? You're the opposite of a diva. Nobody would ever put Bobby and diva in the same sentence together unless it were like, I don't know, some strange sentence. There (laughs) are producers who are like, we must put Bobby Bones first. uh, Scott and I said, yes, of course. That's an obvious yes. We knew it wasn't coming from anyone on your team. We knew it was coming from iHeart because everybody loves you. I felt... I did feel bad. Did she call and tell you that I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because I did. I felt like a, a genuine guilt. She, that- she texted me. Okay. And she texted Scott and me because we're all friends. So Bobby, uh, Bobby's sister-in-law is a good friend of, of, of Scott, my co-host and mine. And she texted and we said, what are you talking about? Please. We should have just corresponded directly, Bobby, and taken out Blythe as the middle woman so that we could have been direct. But but yeah, it, the message was conveyed. All I hope all fears were allayed. And, and thank you. Thank you for coming on our show. Yeah, it was awesome. So the show is called Born to Love, and it's you and Scott Eckert. Now, when you say Born to Love, you're talking to people about what exactly? Anything that they love. And when I say anything, I mean anything. I mean a movie, an activity, a drink, a a food, a clothing item. The more obscure, maybe, the better. And also what we love, and this pertains to you, is when somebody comes on and say they're known for a certain thing. And... Uh, it turns out that they love something that's completely different from that. So like an athlete coming on and talking about how much he loves, you know, architecture or something like that, something unexpected. So, so that's, that's what our show is. I saw Jenna Fisher was on. What does she love on her episode? She loves Keanu Reeves movies. Oh man, me too. Oh, oh. I could have done that too. He's like yes, my favorite yeah. in the whole world. You could have done that. You could have done that. Your topic was fantastic. You love failing. No. But then you love learning from failure. Yeah. They, see, they pin me into a corner on this. But they're so good. Her and Scott, yeah, they pin me into a corner. Yes. Go. And I don't love failing, but I was like, I love what I've gotten from it. And then they kind of raked me over the coals and it was unlike anything I've ever experienced. And I cried afterward, just in case you yeah. guys were wondering. It's very yeah, if, you want, if you want the full Bobby Bones experience on our show, it was really traumatic for him. <laughs> no, you're the whole the whole twist of yours is that you love failing. What you just said, you love failing because it is it has taught you so much. Yes. And by the way, it's funny what you consider failure because like you're so wildly successful. So if if that's failure, sign me up. Bobby. Yeah, but you know, you know what it's like. There's all the stuff that people don't see. It looks glamorous, no, but it's 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 a lot. And so yeah. It, yeah. No, it, it, uh, you know, I do these Peloton classes, you know, Same. that little, yeah. And you know, they're always shouting these inspirational quotes at you. And one was, I, I I'll, I'll botch it. Cause I tried to say it to my husband yesterday and I, I really messed it up, but it's something about just because the, the backpack, just because it looks like you're carrying the backpack easily doesn't mean that it doesn't weigh a lot. Something like that. that's not a very good one. If that's it, they should work on their <laughs> oh no no it is a good one it represents that like, can't be exactly it that's, that too, that wor- that's too many <laughs> words in it <laughs> yes <laughs> but the idea of it is like sometimes when someone's carrying a lot of grief you may not even know no, they have I a get backpack the prim- on the and premise they don't- is great i agree but it's like if they're like okay everybody if the backpack's too heavy just don't wear it so as long as it doesn't hurt your back and i'm like i'm not inspired at all <laughs> nope yes None. no but yes no it was much it was much more concise it was like the backpack is heavy Though it doesn't look it. Nope, botched it again. Yes, I don't know yeah. what it is. We have to go through the tape. We have to go straight to the tape. I don't know. It, I, but but you get the idea. The, with the podcast, the Born to Love podcast, and you guys, you and Scott are both, are you guys, were you guys both doing comedy of some sort? Because it was yes. just like rapid fire LOLs with you guys. Um, it w- when you joined the gang, it was like, wait a minute, were we a d- one? Were we all three once together in an improv group? Because it was seamless. It was it was wonderful. And yes, Scott and I know each other, beca- and that's how we know Blythe too, because we all uh, are mutual friends. Because we all performed together um, in college, we did improv comedy together. So we performed together a bunch, written a bunch of sketch shows. So there's a shorthand there. But well, that's you- why it was so lovely talking to you because you just went right, you fit right in. Will you talk about that as far as improv comedy in college and when you went into college, did you know that wasn't what you wanted to do or was it like a club that you said, let me just try this out? How did it happen? The second one. It was, let, that's a club, let me try it out. Because I played field hockey my first year. And so I sat on the bench mostly, but I was on the field hockey team. And I went to college thinking, yeah, I'm going to play field hockey. And 
And, you know, sitting on, I only had four years. So I was like, I don't, and, and no, no, I don't mean if, if you are sitting on the bench for four years and that's, you're getting a lot of <laughs> satisfaction from doing that, then do it. But I wasn't getting a lot of satisfaction. So I quit the field hockey team. I had seen this improv group perform and I thought maybe I would be good at that. So I auditioned and really enjoyed it. And I'll tell you, I felt like, yeah, I'm good at this. It's much better than sitting on the bench. So that was that's how I I joined and that's did, how I got involved. Did you have a sense of belonging with the group like a a like-minded group of people? Is that yes. a bit what it was? You're totally right. Yes, it was it the group mind or whatever and it and it felt like um, you know, I hadn't, I, had you ever seen improv comedy in high school? I didn't know what that was. No, I'm from Arkansas too. We, <laughs> I, the, I mean, Saturday night, I mean, that's not even improv, right. that was sketch. That was the but closest thing it. I ever saw to it. I had never seen anything where someone was making something up on the spot. And there was that thing, you know, when you find any kind of group or, or activity where you feel like, oh, I mean, this sounds really stupid, but uh, these are my people. Like you get me. So that, that there was that component, which is really nice and, and, and rare. You have to be really vulnerable doing improv, much like writing in a group, much like even doing the show. Like we have to trust each other a lot because mm -hmm. we're on and we're live and there are millions of people listening every day and oh we gosh. have to have each other's back or we we bond, which we do. We also fail miserably live sometimes. But to that. do that, you do improv, that is a lot of, hey, I'm going to trust you and I'm also going to kind of open myself up here to hope that you catch me if I fall. That's exactly right. And you have to have that trust. And and this will sound maybe trite, but I think there's such a great life lesson or, or guidance there, which is that improv is mostly about the other and making sure that your teammates look good. So it's about taking care of your teammates to serve. Now I'm getting really artsy, but it's to serve the whole piece. So you really have to trust each other so that you're making something good. And it's not about any one member, which I think really really helps. And like the best improvisers are the people who don't necessarily get, you know, the the spotlight but are just constantly helping out the whole the whole uh piece. This show here that I have, it's all my we've been Amy, how long have you and I been together? Me 17 years. So, and oh my gosh. and Amy had never done radio, right? These are all my friends from before. I didn't really know what I was doing, but so I just grabbed all my most interesting people and Amy was like selling granite she had graduated for, or went to Texas A&M. And yep. so we've kind of grown through this together. But in her last couple of years, she's like, I'm going to challenge myself. And so she has a little part on an HBO, um, or I guess it's called Max or Snacks or something, whatever it's called. <laughs> now it's Max. Yeah, Max. Yeah. She, it's Max. Yeah, she has it. Uh, but she's like, I'm going to start taking improv classes like as an <gasps> adult, right? So what advice would you give her? Okay, well, first of all, congratulations. Wait, what is the Max show? Well, it was a Christmas movie. It's called Holiday Harmony. Oh my and gosh, congratulations. You're the only one who hasn't seen it, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I well, am. So I know that that's huge. And I don't, what advice did you say? Yeah. I, what advice could you take from me? I feel like taking improv is so, an improv class is so helpful for anyone, whether it's like, if that is, you know, in and of itself, the aim just to take an improv class because you want to, you know, learn about improv, or if it's to help in other aspects of acting. It's all about listening and responding, which I guess is the, the central tenet or component of acting, which is like, listen to what your scene partner says and respond. And just, that's just as simple as that. And and there's nothing that hones that skill, I think, better than improvisation, because if you deny someone's reality, then it's like the whole thing falls apart. So where yeah. are you taking classes? Well, in Nashville, there's this place called Third Coast Comedy, and that's yeah. where I'm going to it's behind a waffle house right you're the only one <laughs> no yeah. i'm not but my daughter she's 16 <laughs> and she ex she found out i was signing up and she expressed interest and i saw i'm really glad you shared your experience just now uh when you were younger because there's a camp that i can sign her up for <gasps> at the end of july and so now i think i'm gonna sign her up it's for high school students and they get to show up for a few hours each oh. day and practice improv I love that. I really don't even know if such a thing was offered when I was that age, like at 16, you know, I mean, like in high school, because I think that improv has gained such or it's it's I think there's just more knowledge of what exactly it is now so that there are more classes like that offered. I just think it's really I don't know. I, at the end of the day, I think it's a lot of fun. It's just fun. You're just making things up. So having said all that, I haven't performed improv with a group live in a long time and it makes me nervous to think about <laughs> because 
Yeah, you it, can't plan it. Any of your shows, like Kimmy Schmidt or The Office, how it, it, were any of them? Did were you allowed to? In any okay, it's, it's the final take, guys. Run where you want to run. Did you ever do any sort of improv in that comedy, or was it all really scripted? And you know, you have to stay on point. Kimmy Schmidt was scripted so carefully and so precisely. I mean, there was not a word in that show that was improvised. And the writing is brilliant, and the jokes are so painstakingly honed and and polished in the writers' room. And there's no improvisation on that show. And the show's fantastic. And on The Office, there was much more. It was just a different style. So there was much more room to breathe, much more room to improvise. I personally never improvised on that show because I was like, leave it to the veterans and the people who have been here longer than I have. Like Steve Carell, Rain Wilson. I mean, basically everyone who has been there longer than I have. But it was there would they would do like, you know, three takes to script. And then they would do what 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 they call a fun run or it would just be improvised. But also in the moment. I mean, when you have people who actually are trained in improv and good at it, it there's nothing better than watching them improvise. And Bridesmaids, the, the I uh Kristen, Wig, and Melissa, they improvised so much stuff. It was such a joy to watch. It was just like Having said that, the flip side is if there's somebody who's bad at improvising, you don't want to watch them. You're like, don't take the fun <laughs> run, guy. Just leave it to, leave it to the pros. <laughs> uh, it's definitely not the same story. But when I went on <laughs> to American Idol, and I spent four years on that show, four seasons, but I went in oh later, gosh. and the everybody was already there in place. Like Seacrest was there, the judge, but they brought me on to be on every episode. And I kind of felt like I'm super happy to be here, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes, but I'm the new guy to something that's yeah. been running for perfectly for a long time you can't you did that in a much bigger way when you went on the office was that is that difficult when you go into a situation like that bobby it's not a bigger way it's there it's apples and it's two different things and yes i totally relate to that because you're like clearly they have set up a show that has a winning formula and now i won't extend this to you but i was the new the only thing that could happen is something could get messed up with the addition of me. So I was like, just don't just stay in your lane and, you know, keep your head down and, and don't do anything wild. So it does feel like, I don't know, my Peloton instructors might disagree with me because they're always telling you to take the backpack, whatever with the backpack, <laughs> but, all, but also, also don't stay in your lane, like make waves. And I'm like, yeah, there's a time and a place for that. But when you're new at a job, you should probably learn first <laughs> yeah, I and felt stay that. in your lane whenever. And again, don't know if it's the same for you, but the analogies are not the same because you're way more successful at this than I am. But when I went on American Idol, um, I, they brought me on for two up ep one episode that got turned into two that turned uh -huh. into four years because I don't think they ever had a plan to bring me on the whole time because I don't think they could see what I thought I, the value I could provide. And luckily I did when yes. you, what was your deal there? Were they like, okay, here we go. Four seasons. Let's go six seasons. No, Bobby, you and I have a very similar track in some ways. Um, I was brought on for like a story arc. And then, I mean, luckily, they just continued to extend my character's arc so that in, into a storyline so that she joined the cast of or that I joined the cast of the show. So, no, when I came on, I think it was for supposed to have been for four episodes. This sounds eerily familiar, Bobby. It does With feel the like same masterminds at like hand. Bizarro <laughs> world me. It's just way more talented. That's who you are. You're a bizarro That's world me. That's just not the case. Yes. That's not that. But aren't you, don't you feel like, I don't know, it's it's a testament. The American Idols producers knew what they were doing by keeping you on, if, if I may say so. I think they, <laughs> look. I'm not, I'm nothing pretty to look at. And I'm a, I'm a, uh, what do you call it? Like what, what's beer when you drink beer? It's an acquired taste, but then you, yeah. I've never had beer, so I don't know, but you've never, have you, have you talked about this? What, you've never had beer. I've never tasted alcohol. You never tasted any alcohol. Never. Yeah. No. And that, yeah. just, I just had everybody, everybody. I wish I could, I'd be awesome at it. I'd be the greatest drinker in the whole, I'm so competitive. <laughs> I would win every drinking contest. I just, I have a ton of people that died from it, so I'm just yes. like, yep. dang, I can't do nope, it. Nope, don't touch that. I'm addicted. Yeah. I'm, I'm having a very addictive personality in general. Yeah, yeah. You, what is your personality type? Do you do the Enneagram? You, what are you? What's Enneagram? Well, it's like the en the Enneagram. The, the e n n e n. Yeah, I'm a hillbilly. Sorry, I'm from Arkansas. Enneagram. The, oh, yeah. the, <laughs> India. The en Does he mean? Do you mean Instagram? No, 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 no. <laughs> Ellie, you've never done the Enneagram that tells you your number? Like, I'm an eight, which is... Oh, I've never done it. What is it? Oh, wow. It is... Wait, is this a very common thing, or do you talk about it? Am I missing something very obvious right now? 
Uh, yeah, I would say yeah. It's pretty yeah, common. Yeah. It's not just an inside joke. It's um, a pretty <laughs> common personality test. They, first, it was love languages. They would do all that. Oh, but yeah. the, the Enneagram, they give you a number based on the type of personality that you are and then the kind you match with the best. And for me, it's been, I don't believe in a lot of the hocus pocus, but it's a, it's a really good one. So, but you've never done it. No, but I'm go- I'm writing it down so I can do it. You know, when when we finish, it it what it's it's it. What does it exactly? What does it take into account? And what does eight mean? Well, You're eight, number eight, like, oh, uh, challenger. Yeah, I'm a challenger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of great dictators have been eights. <laughs> okay, okay. Good times, no, Bobby, good I I I I know I've only known you for a well, I guess we talked for an hour in our show now, mm. so I haven't known you for two hours yet. But you do strike me as someone who um uh. Well, yeah. Might share the characteristics of a dictator in a good way. You're yes, because very... our dictators are obviously wonderful people yeah. that have the best, yes. the, the best They're in mind. They're determined. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. The best, the best yes. uh, interest of the people at heart. Uh, no, Bobby, I, that makes sense. Well, I'm going to do mine, and I'll tell you what I have. I'm probably, I don't know, timid. Uh, there, a six is a backpack wearer, so you'll probably okay. need that. Yeah, All backpack. Right. Hey, Spoiler alert. What I'm is six. Peter Pan goes wrong? Oh, my gosh. Okay, listen to me. Do you know that I'm on Broadway? Well, I, I mean, I... What does that mean? Are you, are you, it's a sh- okay. So they have, so it, there's this show, there's this play called Peter Pan goes wrong. It's by the same creators of this uh, play called the play that goes wrong. And it's a fantastic farce spoof, fun uh, slapstick comedy. And it's, um, it's all British people. So you have to, you know, get used to the different accent. And uh, it's a show on Broadway and they invited me to come on and be the narrator for a week. And I'm doing that right now. And do you know what the best part, Bobby, is that you may have guessed this as the narrator, I'm narrating the show, but all of my lines are written down in the book. So I, oh, you get to I read the lines. Are, what'd you say? You get to read the lines and not have to memorize it. That's exactly right. Oh. And, and I'm, I'm husband said, well, don't you want to know them just like in case something goes wrong? I said, no, I, I trust the book so much more than I trust my own brain. And this is coming from, I should be able to memorize lines well, Bobby. I'm an actress. Can't. Nope. Not not since the pandemic. I don't know what happened. I can't. My brain doesn't work the same. So the, all the lines are in the book. And it's been really fun. The uh, It's like, it's a, ki- a show that's appropriate for kids. So kids come. It's a really joyful experience. So that's what I'm doing right now. Do you have to read it in a British accent? Uh, the, I That was my fear, is that I would have. And no, I don't. I'm allowed to be me ellie coming on as the narrator so it's my accent it's my midwest flat a accent just gracing the ears of a theater full of people (laughs) i'm gonna ask you one question about each of your projects let's start with the podcast the born to love podcast why in the world with all that you're doing and we're talking about the the netflix uh, thing in a second but why do a podcast now what a great question you have and with all that i'm doing that's funny because you you have seven thousand hats on I'm not doing that much. And the show, the podcast was like a must do because it's with my, one of my, the longest, dearest friends I've had in my life, Scott. And we love performing together and we hadn't worked on something in so long. And he lives in LA, I'm in New York. So it's an easy thing to accomplish long distance. And and I'll just say this, we wanted to, this is corny, but we actually wanted to make something that was buoyant and joyful. There's a lot going on in the world. So we wanted this to be a really nice little escape where people like yourself, delightful personalities come on and talk about things that bring them joy. So that's why we wanted to bring some light. We wanted it to be funny and not too serious. And we wanted to have a good time with each other. So that's why. A quick pivot. You you always seem, and I know uh, seeming is not reality because I experience this too, but you always seem to be in such a wonderful mood, like your personality, your, even the characters that you've played have always been so positive. Are you ever just like, man, I'm, I just, I just don't feel great. I don't want to have to be in a good mood, but because everybody thinks I am, I have to be, or they're going to say I'm a jerk on Instagram. Bobby, yes. Does that happen to you? Yeah, where I'm very quiet. When I'm not on, I'm just not yeah. on. And so yes. people will be like, I saw Bobby and he wasn't even that nice. And I'm like, oh, bro, oh, I was no. in line at Subway. What do you want me to do? No, no, you, uh, this is the thing. Now, what, what a lucky thing to be uh, recognized and, and, and like appreciated in that way. But the thing is that you're human. <clears throat> so of course you're going to have downtime. So uh, uh, you don't smile at Subway, Bobby, have a minute to yourself, <laughs> rest. I feel like when I'm at home, am I ever in a bad mood? Again, my husband's not here right now, but like, I just, oh, I, I, same. When I'm not on, I'm not on. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Uh, I, happiness, but, yeah. Happiness for beginners. We're talking about on, and this is based on the book. And again, that's what led me to this question because again, this is, oh, I know. this is that, right? 
And so this is coming at Netflix in what's month seven? Hold on. January, February, March, April, May, June, <laughs> July. July. Next July. month. Okay. Yeah. So July. I have to do fingers for months. I, I, I love that. I'm, a, I'm actually better at you than something. Well, uh, better than yes. you at something. Because like I can name the month by the number. So this is very good. I'm, I'm good with July and seven. That's, yeah. that's a surefire for me. But yeah. What this is coming up. What is this? It's coming out July 27th. It's yes. a movie on Netflix. And it's actually, Bobby, the, the title might be misleading because I actually play. Well, let me back up. It's based on a book by Catherine, the brilliant Catherine Center called Happiness for Beginners. And it's about a, a woman, an unhappy woman who is going through a divorce and decides to go on a hike to kind of, you know, for lack of a better way of describing it, find herself, regain some peace. And so that's me. That's the character I play. And it was and she does find some some meaning. And it's a really, really lovely, sweet, uplifting story. But it was fun to play, Bobby, a woman who's like grumpy. Mm. And she's a grumpy woman. And it was fun. It was really fun. <laughs> the I had three projects left. The Great American Baking Show, when you did the celebrity holiday special, did you eat a lot of food? Or is it just you do a lot and you look at it and don't? The second one. Because you would think, um, oh, you're there's so much to eat here. But in fact, and, and they do offer at break time or whatever after the the bakes are complete. They always call them the bakes. Isn't that funny? So when the bakes are done, they offer it to anybody who wants it. But you know, there's only so much baked goods you can take. So it wasn't as much um, gluttony as I thought it might be. Yeah, I think I would eat all the time. I, Do you want well, addictive personality? So there yeah. you go. And I used to work at a, like I worked at Hobby Lobby and I would eat all the candy all the time in front of me. All the paydays. I cannot eat a payday today because I ate so many paydays when I was working at Hobby Lobby. I hear that. And then you just like, you can't, I, that's I me and Nutter it. Butters. Yeah. I can't. I Nutter cannot. Butters? <laughs> a Nutter Butter. Keep those Nutter Butters away from me. And I don't want that to happen to me with a payday because I love paydays. So I'll keep those, I'll keep those like rare and special. Two questions left. If they okay. came back and said, hey, uh, we love Kimmy Schmidt. We'd like to bring Kimmy Schmidt back. You're... Yes, in a heartbeat. I don't know what the question was. Would that I do was it? it. What, yeah, how would you feel about that? Because I loved that show. Oh, that is the greatest compliment. Thanks for saying that. I, I, I would say yes in a heartbeat. The brains behind that show, Robert Carlock and Tina Fey, are just like supreme. There's nobody like them. So anything that they work on, I want to work on. And so yes, I would say yes in a second. And then the performers. Are you kidding? Like the the rest of the cast. It's one of those things, Bobby, have you ever worked on something and you're doing it and you're doing it and you recognize that it's special, but it's not until it's over that you're like, oh my gosh, was that special? That's what's happened to me. The Born to Love podcast is what I felt. I knew what was happening. I was really <laughs> feeling it. Then when it was over, I just cried. I just cried because it was so amazing. I wish I knew the good old days when they were the good old days, Ellie. I just felt that way mm -hmm. about our hour long chat. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> and then finally, uh, well, I'll just ask that le leads into this. The yeah. final episode of The Office. How emotional was it? And was it? And how long was it? It was really emotional. And I felt like a little bit of a fraud because I did join the cast in the fifth season. So it's not like I'd been there from the start. But I had all, all the emotions. I hate when people say that. But I did. I had all the feels. And it was like, it was why do I feel like it's stretched over the course of two weeks? But that's what comes to mind. And yes, people were crying left and right. It was a really like emotionally charged episode. And I just remember seeing Rain Wilson weep. And I was like, oh, the, 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 you know, the, um, exterior, I don't, what am I trying to say? The, the tears of the clown or whatever. Some, some, well, you're good with words. What am I trying to say? <laughs> it was like, wow, I've never seen him cry before is what it was like. Mm -hmm. You did good and there. So it, Do you have any backpack stories you can tell us too, maybe? <laughs> I told you. It's why I'm not a Peloton instructor, okay? Uh, okay Believe me, I've tried. Everybody that's listening now, check out the Born to Love podcast. It is super funny. I'm on an episode. I did not mean for the episode to come out early. Bobby insisted that it be the very yes, first I, one. Yes, I demanded. And we said fine. Yes, um, it is <laughs> it's super funny. So it's Ellie and Scott. It's called Born to Love. Even their logo looks rock and roll. It looks 80s rock and roll. You know, yes, it's like, it's like, that's it. That's exactly the vibe we're going for. And I have to thank you again for being so nice to come on our show because I know you're very busy and we really, really are grateful to you for taking the time to be on our show. Well, I'm a massive fan. You're awesome. And I asked Blythe too, my sister-in-law. We were I was with her last week and I said, Hey, would Ellie and I be like be friends in real life? And she was like, Oh yeah. She's awesome. And so now I, I really, I didn't believe it at first because I thought, what, a, maybe a fraud. But no, now I'm fully yeah. in. And, no, no, no. It, it, it's real. And we're going to be, you know, uh, oh, right. You don't live in California. Yeah, I'm in the middle. 
All right, never mind. I keep saying, oh, we're going to be in California. We'll all get together, but we won't get, maybe we'll Zoom. We'll Zoom together with life and it'll be like we're in the same room. Mm, yeah. I, are you one of those people that go, hey, let's do something and then you'd never really do it? That's it. Yeah. yeah cool. Me too. So we won't, we, <laughs> yeah. that will never happen. Yeah, Bobby. cool, cool, cool. All <laughs> yeah. right, you guys check out Born to Love. Ellie, good to see you and talk good to you soon. Good to see you. Bye. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.